Swan, the new white floating soap that's pure as fine Castile's, brings you George Burns and Gracie Allen. With the Swan Tet, the music of Felix Mills, and yours truly, Harry Von Zell. And now meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, it's morning in the Burns home, and George comes downstairs with a happy song on his lips, never dreaming that in the den, Gracie is holding a special meeting of that horror of all horrors, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. (laughs) Give me land, lots of land on the starry skies above. Don't fence me in. (laughs) Oh, Gracie. Maybe she's in the den. Oh, Oh, no. Fenced in. <laughs> well, I'll see about that. Gracie, come out here. Oh, uh, uh, come in, dear. Good morning, sweetheart. Don't good morning me. You promised that the uplifters wouldn't meet here anymore. Now get those old hens out of here. <laughs> old hens? Why, to look at them, you'd say they were girls in the 20s. They may have been girls in the 20s, but this is the 40s. <laughs> now, get them out of here. But, George, this is a special meeting. We've got to finish it. What makes it so special? Well, remember Tootsie Sagwell? That homely man chaser? <laughs> I'll say I do. Well, hadn't you noticed that she's been away for quite a while? Yeah. I thought she'd been drafted. <laughs> no, no. The girls of the club decided that she must get a husband, so we raised a fund. The Tootsie Sagwell While There's Life, There's Hope Fund. <laughs> what did you do with it? Well, we sent Tootsie to a finishing school. That won't help her any. Why, it, 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 she... It looks like she'll never get a man. And when Tootsie walked by a bunch of men, there never was a wolf whistle. Oh, there was, too. And now that she's been to a finishing school, I bet she can whistle without putting her fingers in her mouth. It's ridiculous. Why waste your money on that day? Well, you don't understand, George. It's a business deal. Tootsie agreed that when she lands a rich husband, she'll pay us all back with interest. Great idea. Uh, You each own a piece of Tootsie, huh? Oh, no. We didn't subdivide her. The the whole girl's going to get married. I still say it won't work. Tootsie's got nothing. Oh, George, how can you say that? Tootsie's a very smart girl. And very pro- progressive. She's even ahead of the president. Ahead of the president? Sure. She's just starting. He's just starting after the four Fs. Tootsie's been after them for years. <laughs> Look, break up the meeting. Well, we can't, darling. We're waiting for Tootsie. Now, excuse me, I'll have to get back. Oh, now, come to order, girls. Come to order. Now, Tootsie will be here soon, and we should plan our campaign. Uh, Any suggestions, Blanche? Well, now that Tootsie's been to finishing school, we should try to find a cultured man for her. Uh, Does anyone know an eligible writer or or artist? Well, there's Rudolph Crippen, the animal painter. Rudolph Crippen? Where is his work exhibited? At Ocean Park. He touches up the horses on the (laughs) merry-go-round. Let's have him touch up Tootsie. Oh, Clara. Have you a suggestion, Olive? No, but I just had an awful thought. Suppose Tootsie is so changed that she won't want a husband, and then we'd lose our investment. Oh, no, we wouldn't, Olive. Even if she felt that way, she's still a member of this club sworn to obey the will of the majority. Say, that gives me an idea. If we find a man, we should make him a member, too. Then he'll have to do anything we say, such as marrying Tootsie. Oh, that's a marvelous idea. But this man isn't going to be easy to find. He's got to be single. Not too young. Uh, Not too bright. Not too handsome. (laughs) Where can we find a man like that? Excuse me for intruding. (laughs) No one answered the front door. Uh, Can I come in? Girls! Do you see what I see? It's him, in the flesh. Yeah, and so much of it. <laughs> huh? What's, what's going on here? Oh, girls, I-, I want you all to meet that unmarried, currently employed, nationally famous radio announcer, 
Harry Von Zell. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, Gracie, I wouldn't say nationally famous. Oh, no? No, I think world famous is more like it. <laughs> because just about everyone in the world has heard me say, Swan, the new white floating soap is pure as fine Castile's. So mild, so gentle that... Oh. What a glorious voice. Oh, isn't it marvelous? Oh, well, thank you. So mild, so gentle, so pure. (laughs) Doctors recommend Swan for bathing babies. And the fact that Swan is baby mild makes it wonderful for your own complexion and great for your dishes or delicate fabrics. Mr. Bonzel, how does it happen you've never gotten married? Oh, <laughs> I'm too shy. God. I'm really, I couldn't face a bride unless I was blindfolded. Uh, this is going to work out great. <laughs> what was that? Um, oh, um, how would you like to join our club, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society? Well, sounds like a good club. How do I join? Well, just raise your right hand and take the oath of allegiance. Can I raise my left hand, too? Uh, why? Well, I just washed them with Swan, and they look so nice. <laughs> you know, that's why you should use Swan for your dishes. You not only get loads of suds, but baby mild Swan helps keep your hands looking soft, smooth, and lovely. No kidding. Well, just raise your right hand and repeat after me. On my honor as a woman... On my honor as a woman... <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not a woman. Oh, well, we'll change that to whatever you are. <laughs> Now, here, read the oath. <clears throat> I promise not to flirt with men or wear too much lipstick. Oh, well, we'll take that one out for you. Thanks. Uh, I promise to share my pre-war girdle with the other members. Well, we'll take that out, too. No, don't take it out. I'll be glad to share mine. Ah, oh, Harry, you're sweet. Now, make the last promise. That's the most important one. Mm-hmm. Uh... Yeah. Lastly, I promise to do anything that a majority of the members decides I should do. Oh, oh, nice. Wonderful. Now you're a full-fledged member of the Uplift Society. Girls, let's give the club cheer. We, we always smile and laugh. We never, never frown. For, For the, the Uplift, the Uplift will never let us down. Uh, yeah. Well, um, <laughs> so long, girls. Say, by the way, now that I'm a member of this club, what do I do? Well, now, we thought that you might take over one of our investments, Sagwell Incorporated. Sagwell Incorporated? Is that a business? <laughs> and we can't wait to give it to you. <laughs> Got a accent to wait the positive feeling. Eliminate the negative and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. You gotta spread joy up to the maximum. Bring the down to the minimum and have faith. A pandemonium tribal to walk upon the scene. To illustrate my last remarks, Jonah in the whale, Noah in the ark. What did they do just when everything looked so dark? Man, they said we better accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative and latch on to the affirmative and don't mess with Mr. In Between. Well, girls, our worries are over. When Tootsie becomes Mrs. Harry Von Zell, we'll make a nice profit on our investment. Gracie, are you positive that Mr. Von Zell has plenty of money? Oh, sure he has. He's a radio announcer. Why, they make a fortune just selling things backwards. <laughs> I hope Mr. Von Zell doesn't want a glamour girl. What he wants makes no difference. Now that he's a club member, we give the orders. That's right, Blanche. According to the bylaws, he has to do anything we tell him to do. Hmm. I wonder if Van Johnson would like to join. <laughs> May I come in? Well, I'll tell you, you so well. 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 How do you do, my dears? <laughs> <laughs> Frightfully decent to see you again. Oh, Tootsie, lift your veil. Let's see what the finishing school did for you. Uh, very well. 
There. Tootsie, I don't think they're quite finished. <laughs> oh, really, they've done wonders. For instance, they taught me not to use makeup. It's more refined. Yeah, and it's tidier, too. Now, uh, now when you smile, you won't get lipstick on your ears. <laughs> what else did they teach you, Tootsie? Oh, how to increase my appeal. I learned a lot by balancing a book on my head. If the book was forever amber, you could have learned more by reading it. <laughs> the thing that impresses me most, Tootsie, is the way they improved your speech. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and you sound so British. You know what? If you weren't wearing a dress, I'd swear you were C. Aubrey Smith. <laughs> Shall we tell her the news, Gracie? Oh, sure. Tootsie, we have the most exciting news for you. Oh, indeed. So few things excite me now that I've acquired culture. Uh, what is it, my dear? Well, we found a man for you. A man? Woo! <laughs> Oh, you mean a, a person of a male gender? <laughs> yes, of the opposite sex. Uh, uh, what is the gentleman's name? Harry Von Zell. And he's loaded, Tootsie. Ooh, let's get him before he sobers up. <laughs> now, Blanche, Blanche means that he has plenty of money. And remember, when you take him for better or for worse, we get our share of the better. Oh, oh, I'll keep my bargain, girls. You can think of me as a bond that pays off at face value. <laughs> Let's just think of you as a bond. <laughs> oh, gee, I can hardly wait to become Mrs. Uh, uh, what's his name again? Von Zell. Oh, cute. Uh, can I try out my finishing school techniques on him? Oh, what sort of techniques, did he? Oh, lots of them. For instance. They taught me the helpless technique. Men adore girls who can't do anything for themselves. Oh. Well, let's not take any chances on it, Missing Tootsie. Before you try it, I'd better see how it works out on George. All right, Gracie. Uh, I'll go in and be very helpless. George? Yeah? Scratch my nose. <laughs> Scratch your nose? Yeah. It itches... Why not scratch it yourself? All right. Lift my hand. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Gracie? I'm helpless. Bring me a chair. It's a chair right in back of you. Push me. <laughs> oh, stop. If you want to sit down, sit down. I see a speck of dust on the chair. Well, brush it off. That big heavy thing? <laughs> Look, I'm busy. You better run along. Carry me out. No. Well, Tootsie, don't use that one. It's no good. Well, what happened? Well, uh, they taught me another technique that might work. You pretend to be the vigorous outdoor girl who goes in for sports. Oh. Well, wait. I better try that one, too. George. Now what? One raffle. <laughs> Maybe you'd rather shoot a few chuckers of tennis. <laughs> chuckers of tennis? Oh, I know. Have you got a hawk? A hawk? I'd like to play some hockey. <laughs> Gracie, do you feel all right? Sure. Want a rest? I don't want a rest. Oh, afraid I'd beat you because I'm in the funk. <laughs> yeah, sweetheart. I'm a great athlete. Do any running? Sure. Well, get on your mark and dash out of here. <laughs> Tootsie, that's no good either. Oh, well, I don't know. Well, well, it that. doesn't matter. I'll just use my natural charm. Gracie, in case you get another brand... Oh, hello, Tootsie. How'd you do, George? Back from finishing school, huh? <laughs> Rather. And I'll bet I don't look a bit like the old Tootsie. No, you look like an older Tootsie. <laughs> Gracie, did she have anything to do with the stuff you were pulling? Well, yes, in a way. We were trying our techniques for her to use in capturing Harry Von Zell. Harry Von Zell? So that's your game. Well, I'll put a stop to that. I'll tip him off. Oh, 
Gee, Gracie, now he'll spoil everything. Oh, well, now, don't you worry, Tootsie. He can't do a thing. We made Harry a club member. And he took the oath. And if we vote that he marries you, he marries you. Oh, how wonderful. You will all vote for me, won't you? Oh, it'll be a landslide. You couldn't lose if you were a Republican. <laughs> Gracie, I came as soon as you called. Where is she? You mean Tootsie? Yeah, this gorgeous, exotic creature you described on the phone. Is she really terrific? Tootsie has everything a man could ask for. She has? Yes. And you're going to have the honor of being the first to ask for it. <laughs> well, what does she look like? Mm, well, have you seen Betty Grable's legs? Yeah. Well, Tootsie has just as many. <laughs> Well, gee, well, I can't wait, you know. I, do you think if I play my cards right, I might get to first base? Just shuffle and deal and you'll win the World Series. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Let's go in and meet her. Oh, don't you come in yet. Tootsie's changing into a long dress. Well, that'll hide her legs. <laughs> well, we'll be ready in two minutes. You wait right here. Oh, I said you were going to Dum dee dee dee, dum oh, dee Howard. dee dee. Howard, huh? Howard, oh, I've been looking all over for you. Why? Gracie is going to try to get you married to a broken down dame named Tootsie Sagwell. Broken down? Gracie says she's fresh out of finishing school, cultured and refined, a girl I can look up to. You'll have to look up to her. She's six feet three. <laughs> six feet three? What does she weigh? Ninety-two pounds without her broomstick. <laughs> Wait a minute, now, there must be some mistake. Look, George, if I marry someone, she's got to be irresistible, sensational, loaded with sex appeal. You know, my equal. Look, Harry, those girls and the Uplift Society didn't pick you for your charm. They want what you've got in the bank. What I've got in the bank? No. No, they can't have that. I've worked and struggled to save it. Don't let them take it, George. Don't let them take my swan soap. <coughs> Harry. They know that swan's the new white floating soap that's pure as fine Castile. Harry. They know that swan is so pure, so mild and gentle, that it's a perfect baby soap. And gosh, if it's great for baby, it must be wonderful for my tub or shower, my hands and face. Harry, Harry, calm down. They're not after your swan soap. They're after your money. Well, I don't... You... Money? <laughs> you know, cash, moolah, mazuma. That stuff the sponsor gives you every week. Oh, you mean lever lettuce? <laughs> Correct. Well, oh, say, you know, George, that's not all the sponsor gives. Did you know he'll give a free bar of pure, mild swan to every baby born during 1945? That's to help baby's tender skin get the proper care right from the beginning. Your grocer or your druggist has all the details. Harry, listen to me. You're in a spot. Well, uh, come in. Good morning, Mr. Burns. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Postman. Hey, you look troubled. I am. Trying to save Harry here from getting married. A fate worse than death. <laughs> oh, you don't believe in marriage, Mr. Postman? Oh, personally, I think that every man should enjoy married life. But with a woman around, how can he enjoy it? <laughs> well, here's your mail, Mr. Burns. Just some bills. Yeah, just some bills. Hey. Hey, I've got it. What? A plan. Huh? And Mr. Postman, stick around. We'll need you. Now, look, Harry. You go in there and meet Tootsie. Pretend to be crazy about her. Agree to marry her, then leave everything to me. Yeah, but George... When I come in, just take your cue from me. It's your only chance. Uh, okay. Oh, now, the quiet, girls, quiet. Well, here he is. Tootsie, I'd like you to meet Harry Bonzel. Oh, 
Oh, Mr. Von Zell, you're handsome, you're charming, you're wonderful. Well, thank you. And you're... you're Tootsie Sagwell. Well, that's that. Now, when are you two getting married? Oh, please, Gracie, there's no need to rush Mr. Von Zell like that. There should be a period of courtship first. Two or even three hours. <laughs> well, we'll do better than that. You can be married tomorrow, honeymoon on Wednesday, and Thursday morning we'll have a welcome home party at Harry's Bank. <laughs> Excuse me, Harry. Uh, the postman wants to see you. Yes, I have some bills for you, Mr. Von Zell. Bills? From your creditors. Oh, 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 yes, bills. Uh, where are they? The truck is parked outside. <laughs> It, it takes a truck to deliver his bills? Yes, ma'am. And a trailer for the summonses. <laughs> Mr. Von Zell, are we to understand that you're broke? Flat. <laughs> you, you mean that all that bulge in your hip pocket is just hip? Yep. Oh, go and never darken our powder room again. Well, girls... We'll never take another man into our club. Oh, well, I'll have to be running, too. My wife wants me to see her lawyer about a divorce. Oh, you poor man. You must feel terrible. Yes. <laughs> well, goodbye. Remember, keep smiling. Oh, wait. Wait, Mr. Postman. Then there's, uh, there's a chance that you may soon be single? Yes. Um, have you any money, Mr. Postman? Oh, I have a little nest egg. Well, I know just the hen who can hatch it. <laughs> I beg your pardon? You were nothing. Girls, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Good. Mr. Postman, raise your right hand and repeat after me. On my honor as a woman. On my honor well, as a woman. Well, here we go again. Here. <laughs> George and Gracie will return in just a second, and I want to ask you if you're throwing away any ration points, because you are if you're not saving your used kitchen fat. Remember, you get two red ration points for every pound of waste fat you turn in, and that's big help under the new ration schedule. But most important, that waste fat is needed right now and needed desperately. So, how about it? Now, here are George and Gracie. George, you'll be happy to know that the uplifters are not going to meet here anymore. Wonderful. We're going to get a little club room of our own. That is, if our husbands will chip in for decorations. Glad to. What sort of decorations do you want? Oh, just a few fur coats to throw over the backs of the chairs. Good night. <laughs> The makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune in to your Columbia station next Monday, same time. Remember George Burns and Gracie Allen on CBS every Monday night. So until next Monday, this is Harry Bonzel saying, Well, I, Swan, how about you? <laughs> This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.